This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Sewing machines. They can get pretty frustrating pretty quickly, especially if we don't know what to look for when we are looking to buy a sewing machine. An industrial sewing machine can be very complicated and it can be very just overwhelming to, to understand what exactly we need or what to look for when purchasing one. Today's video is all about that. The must haves for an industrial leather sewing machine. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it helps you out. And uh, yeah, let's figure this thing out together. Let's do it. All right, guys, so the number one question I get all the time is what kind of a machine should I get? Not necessarily the brand, but what kind. So there are flatbed machines, there are cylinder arm machines, there are post bed machines, there are long arm machines, there are a whole bunch of different types of machines. But the number one machine that I suggest is to get a cylinder arm machine. And the reason why is because you can quite often add a flat bed attachment, which makes it really versatile, especially if this is gonna be your first machine. It's kind of like a do it all machine, but not really, but the closest you can get to a do-it-all machine, if that makes sense. So if you're sewing wallets or journals or belts or things that are flat, you can just put on that flat bed attachment and sew away. And if you wanna sew gussets later, the very next minute, take off that flat bed attachment and then you can sew on the cylinder arm. Having that flat bed attachment on a cylinder arm makes it the probably my number one choice when buying a sewing machine. Along with that cylinder arm machine, you wanna make sure that it's a walking foot machine. The walking foot really helps pull your leather material through the machine a lot easier. There are machines that use rollers as well, which is great, um, but your average sewing machine that you probably have from your mom or you know, from your grandmother that just sews lighter material doesn't have that ability to pull the material through properly, especially with thicker weighted stuff. So an industrial walking foot machine is key. Pair that with a cylinder arm style machine and that is the best way to go. So now that we've talked about the machine style and the type, we're gonna talk about the things that you should add to the machine. Because when you buy a machine, you can, you can add these features or these things to it that will enhance your sewing experience. And one of those things is a speed reducer. And this is a must in my opinion. If you're not using a speed reducer in your leather craft work, I would really, really consider buying one or, or modifying your machine to have one. Because with the speed reducer, not only does it slow down your machine, but it increases torque. And, and especially when you're going through thicker leathers or leathers that are, are more uh, dense, like a lot of chrome tan leathers get really dense, it can slow your machine down to the point where the needle, it, it can't make it all the way through and you'll hear it chug through and it won't, it just won't work properly. A speed reducer gives it that extra muscle and that extra just that, ugh, to get through that leather and it works so well. It works like a hot knife going through butter. You can just, you can totally notice a difference if you know what I'm talking about. There are many different kinds of speed reducers that you can get in terms of um, sizes. So there's different ratios. The one that I have on my Juki, it's a three, six, nine inch wheel that changes the speed depending on which size wheel you've got your belts on. Uh, for mine, I've got mine to the biggest ratio, which is the three and the nine, which really gives it that extra torque and it really slows down the motor that much. With my Adler, I couldn't put the same speed reducer as I do with my Juki without really modifying the table and just wrecking everything. And the way that the belts are in my Adler are different than they are in my Juki. So I had to use what they call an inline speed reducer and it pretty much does the same job, but it's just configured in a different configuration. With an inline speed reducer, hence the name inline, the belt and the motor and the pulley are all in line. With my Juki, it's not an inline, it's a different style speed reducer and I had to modify my table, cut a little bit of it out so that the belts would fit properly. They both produce the same end result, but just the method of installation is different. That's it. But speed reducer, you're definitely gonna need one. Here's another one that people don't necessarily think about when they buy a sewing machine and I really should have thought about this before because I ended up buying another piece of equipment that I should have just got in the first place. And I'm talking about a motor. A correct sewing machine motor is very important. I got a DC brush motor um, and that was, the, that was a wrong choice because inside a brushed motor, it has a clutch that stops the, the wheels from spinning so that when you let go of your pedal, everything stops. It's got this little brake. And that is not a really good system to have, especially if you're gonna be using your hand to crank the wheel. Because cranking the wheel, 
uh, it goes through the pulleys and it goes to the motor. And then when you have this brake on that motor, it is so hard to turn. I was, I was cranking that thing so hard and I couldn't believe that how hard it is to get through, uh, especially when you don't have a speed reducer as well. So when I first bought the Adler, it didn't have a speed reducer and it had a brushed servo motor. You wanna make sure that you get a brushless servo motor. Make sure it's a brushless one because it'll work a lot better for the type of work that we do. If you are just plowing through this work and you're not really caring about how your holes look or your stitches look, and you know those people in the factories that are just blazing through different like tarp materials and then speed is your friend and you just wanna crank out as many things as you want and you're not caring about how your stitch looks. And the type of work that we do, we wanna make sure that every hole counts because when that needle goes in the hole and it's in the wrong place, you take that needle out, you've got a hole in your project that shouldn't be there. So make sure you've got a speed reducer and a brushless servo motor. And I wish I would have known that. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick second and talk to you about this video sponsor and that is Skillshare. I know you've heard me talk about this a million times before, but I can't stress to you enough how important online learning is. In today's world and society, it is so important to have an online presence. You want to look up something, you want to look up a company, you go online and check it out. Unfortunately, if you do not have a strong online presence, you probably won't be able to communicate what you want to your audience. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands upon thousands of classes for creative and curious people. You wanna take your website or your photography or your YouTube channel to the next level? Skillshare is the place to be. Skillshare is specifically curated for online learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. If you're like me and video is a huge part of your business or you want it to start to be a huge part of your business, you're going to want to learn how to video edit. One class that I highly recommend is called Called Learn Video Editing with Premiere Pro for Beginners with Jordy Vandeput. He goes into a lot of depth and explains things very well, nice and easy to understand, and I think you'll learn a lot, especially if you wanna start a YouTube channel or start creating video content for your business. The great thing about Skillshare is that it is incredibly affordable. With an annual subscription, it is less than $10 a month. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of premium Skillshare. You can join as many online classes as you would like. So in 2021, why not start something new. Why not explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in Skillshare's online community? What you find just might surprise you, and it could change your life. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. So these next things that I'm going to be talking about aren't necessarily a must-have, but they greatly improve your work, and they just make sewing so much easier. The drop-down edge guide is a lifesaver when it comes to making sure that you're stitching straight lines, especially on the outsides of your projects. So when you're putting that final stitch around your wallet, you wanna make sure that that wallet stitch is straight. You don't want it going and veering off and, and doing all these weird things. You don't necessarily have to have a drop down edge guide. I mean, you could just do it yourself and make sure that you're going straight, but it takes a lot of that mistake and a lot of that user error out of the picture right away. You still have to learn how to use the edge guide, but in the end, you are going to be loving this thing because it makes your work look incredible. Another thing is a light, good adequate lighting for your project. I've got two lights on every single one of my machines just so that I can make sure I can see everything that's going on. If you're not seeing what's going on, chances are if you can't see what you're doing, you're more susceptible to messing up. It's just a good practice to, to have your area well lit. It just is not a good thing if you're not lit properly. So two lights. I have one for the front and I have one kind of above to illuminate all of my project. Another thing that makes your life very easy or more enjoyable is to make sure that you have a knee lift. And what a knee lift is, it's a lift that you can use with your knee that lifts that presser foot up and down so that you can move your project around or move it in and out properly. And it just makes your life so much easier. I've used a machine before that didn't have a knee lift and you're constantly reaching in underneath, lifting the presser foot, slapping it back down. It's just not fun using a machine that doesn't have a knee lift. It just slows you down. It's another thing that you have to do. It's another step that has to go into the process that just slows you down. And most machines come with knee lifts anyway, so I don't think that's a problem. Another thing that you can consider when you have a machine that you don't have to actually buy extra is making sure that you have your presser foot uh, ground down so that it's smooth. A lot of people complain about their projects having presser foot marks on there, and that can be quite easily eliminated by unscrewing the top of your presser foot 
spring, which puts pressure on there, but also taking your presser foot off and sanding down that jagged foot. That jagged foot and that rough foot is good for pulling material through like maybe canvas or certain materials that aren't leather, but leather marks quite easily. So if you grind down that presser foot, it's really, really good for the end result. You can also grind down the feed dog foot underneath, um, but that's another process in itself. And uh, you wanna make sure that you have some spare parts just in case you mess that up. <laughs> All right, one last thing that just makes your machine just that much better is putting casters on the bottom of it. I know in a smaller workspace, sometimes there's not enough room to really have your machine stay where you want it to stay. But if you put casters on the bottom of your machines, you can roll around your machine quite easily. The one that I have here, I don't have casters on it yet. I should because sometimes when you're making bags, you have to pull away your machine from the wall so that your bag can go behind the machine properly and not get all bunched up and mashed up as you're pushing it through your machine. So casters are a great way for you to really just have your space and be able to move around your machine pretty easily. And yeah, casters are awesome. I have them on everything except that one machine and it's just bugging me. So I gotta do that. I didn't talk about a specific brand of sewing machine. There are tons of machines out there in all different price ranges. Obviously the more expensive machines are just gonna be a better quality machine and the parts inside of them will break down less. Don't get me wrong, machines like Adler's, uh, even though they're quite expensive, they do still break down. And I encourage you to really get to know your machine. And when a machine breaks, I really, really suggest that you learn how to fix it because you know machines break and you're just gonna have to learn how to fix it. And you're gonna save a ton of money for you to fix it rather than some sewing machine tech who will charge you $100 just to show up. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly recap what you're gonna need on an industrial sewing machine, just in case you've made it this far and you wanna know that again, or you could rewatch this. You're going to look for an industrial sewing machine with a walking foot, with a cylinder arm that you can attach a flatbed attachment to, a brushless servo motor, speed reducer, adequate lighting, drop down edge guide. What was the last one? Oh yeah, casters, something that I haven't done, but it's all good. 2021, here I come, casters all the way. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that this video has helped you. Maybe answer some questions that you didn't even know you had questions about. Sewing machines are intimidating at first, but once you get to know them, once you get to know what you're looking for, it becomes so much easier. If you like this video, guys, you know what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, God bless, peace.